y'all it is hope at crafty hope and i am working in my soul food journal now this journal was made as part of the soul food class from tiffany of southern gals designs and um i'm not even sure why i grabbed this one just kind of wanted to work in it and i've got it open to a page you see the one on the left is done and the one on the right is just some ledger paper now, when I did this, I was trying to process some feelings and emotions and work it out through my art. So that's why I titled this video, Getting It All Out. My grandmother on Christmas, we believe, had a couple of strokes. And this one, um, this is not a favorite journal page for me. It's um, not the prettiest thing but I kind of wanted to share it to show you that this is kind of what art journaling is all about is working through some of those feelings and putting them straight into your art so that's what I'm doing here I was struggling with the fact that my grandmother would possibly never be herself again and I'll go ahead and let y'all know that she has recently passed from a series of additional strokes that um but I'm glad I got to do this page because it'll help me remember her and remember that um, I was doing what I could to process all of it. So I started this page with some ephemera. So I've got some book pages and handwritten letters and just different little bits and pieces of paper that I am collaging straight down onto the back of this ledger paper. And I'm just using, since I'm doing paper to paper here, I'm just using my Uhu glue stick and got those down and then you see I've got this um, bamboo pen thing this was some of this stuff I was using because it was new products that I had just gotten in the mail that I had bought myself for I can't remember if it was Christmas or for my birthday I had bought a couple things with a gift card or what but you see here I'm taking just that bamboo pen and a little bit of I think that's either acrylic ink or some kind of in um what do you call that? Um, India ink or something like that. And I'm just, just a dip pen made out of bamboo. And I kind of wrote my feelings out using it straight onto that page I had collaged. So, and then I just blotted, used a piece of paper to blot it. And I like some of the, the smushiness that I got there. Yes, the smushiness. And, um, and it wasn't about what that said but it was getting some of those feelings and emotions out that I was trying to do so I wrote down how I was feeling about her strokes and how I was having to deal with it and whatnot and then I'm just taking some those are just some soft pastels that I recently also got as part of some of my presents to myself and put a couple colors down and then I grabbed this coral I'm not usually a pinky or orangey person, but for some reason I love this color of coral. So I've put it down um, just in a couple places and I'm using a wet paintbrush. I want to, you know, I don't want the words that I've put down there to be the focal point for this, but it was all about just kind of getting them down. So I got those down and now I'm going to cover them up somewhat. And that is a Deco Arts Media, I think possibly paint that I found um yeah I see it's deco art Americana premium paint that I picked up I think at Michael's I think they were clearancing that out and um they didn't have a whole lot of colors left but I really love this kind of mustardy orangey yellow and so I put it down a little bit and uh, just use my finger to to smear it out you see I'm cleaning my fingers off this video this page took me a lot longer than I really thought it would I was taking my time with it thinking through how I wanted to use the materials and again it is not the most beautiful page in the world but I got to just play and um, process the emotions I was feeling and like I said I think I said that that's kind of the purpose of an art journal is to kind of feel your way through some of the things now that's the Deco Arts Media Gesso, and I am just going to take a palette knife and just scrape it over this page. Again, I'm covering up some of those those words, not that they're there and out in the world, um, 
they don't need to be seen by anybody. Now, y'all may have read it. I don't even remember what I wrote there. So, um, like I said, it was a lot of a lot of stuff going on in my head. So I am. I like that those words just kind of add a little layer of texture and dimension to the background there. And this is all kinds of layers and dimensions. Now those are some Lindy Spray. One's a lime and one's a teal. Um, I think lime is luscious lime and I can't ever remember the teal but it's my favorite of the Lindy's that I have is that teal. And I'm going to spend a lot of time here trying to protect everything, protect the other page, protect my desk. Um, I don't even know. I spend far too much time. Y'all and I did speed this up. This is um, double speed. So, um, you can see how, like, slow, methodical I'm kind of moving through this, which isn't usually my jam. And I'm only going to spray each of these a couple little quick times, and <laughs> see, I'm struggling with all of that, which is silly for the amount of time it takes me to spray them. So, I don't know. Once I get it sprayed, I've got that, that bamboo pen there, and I'm just, some of the bigger, globular dots, I'm just spreading them out, kind of testing the limits with those pens since they are new uh, to see what, what I could do with them. Now I'm going to show you here in a second. I really liked that upper portion there where the spray went. I really, really liked how everything, I don't know, the combination of all the different colors and all of that and the splatters and all that. I really like how that all kind of melded there. You see, I'm looking at it. And I'm going to go ahead and dry it since I did like it. I did, yeah, I say that because what's going to see here is me showing you. I really like that little schmush there. So to preserve it, I thought I'd go ahead. One of the other new things I bought myself was some clear gesso, which I did not have. So this I picked up online. Um, I'm not even sure who makes it. I don't know if it's in my reach or not. Let's see. It is the Finnebear Art Basics stuff. I can see it from here. Um and that's what I'm using. And as soon as I don't think I let all of the other stuff dry, because as soon as I tried to put that gesso on top of that, it's smeared and lost some of that definition of the splatters and the colors. And I wasn't super happy with that. You see me stopping because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do now because I was a little distraught over it. But it, I don't know, you know, that that's... Part of the process is experimenting and seeing what happens and playing and that's what I was doing. So I think I'm going to show you here a thumbs down. Yeah, there's my thumbs down because I was, I was really mad that I lost my splatters there. But it's just going to take a little more experimentation and I'll, I'll get it. So then I dried that clear gesso to, I don't know, I guess preserve it a little bit more. And this you know, I'm just playing. So, and I had heard that putting a little clear gesso down before using the pastels like this was great. And so I'm trying to remember, I think Kasha Avery from Everything Art mentioned that in something maybe during the Advent Hop. So that's why I got both the clear gesso and some more of the soft pastels. So here's me trying to play with the soft pastels on top of where I'd put down the clear gesso just to see if it made a difference. And I have to tell you, I didn't see a whole lot of difference, but I don't know. Maybe that's just a me thing. Um, I hadn't played with either of those materials enough to really, to really know if it's, if it's a big difference. So I am, um, I've got some purple that I started with a lighter violet, but that wasn't really what I wanted. So I grabbed the darker purple. I think I had noticed at this point that I had used almost every color possible and which is fine by me. I like playing with all the colors. So I put that a little bit that down and I grabbed this feud bowl, I think is what it called. Um, it's a nice pen. Um, again, another new purchase for me with some either birthday or Christmas money, and so I start trying to write cherish every moment. Like I said, I was thinking about my grandmother and um, not knowing where her, the strokes were going to take her and how long we were going to have her after them, and maybe it was serendipitous that I thought cherish every moment because I really put forth an effort this last month or so to do that. 
as we as we were losing her. So I did not like how that looked straight on the on the page like that. So I decided I'm gonna cover it up. So I grabbed a little bit of masking tape, which I put over the word cherish, which was the biggest thing on there. And then I've got a little bit of that gesso that I'm covering up some of the other words and kind of just lightly put in there. I wasn't I didn't want it to look intentional because that those words could look like some of the writing that was already in the background. So I was just trying to cover up a little bit of it. And um, I had a little bit more of the masking tape out. So I wanted to carry that theme through as well. So I'm sticking it also down on the page so that it's, um, it looks like it was intentional, <laughs> even though it absolutely wasn't. Oh, here goes the dog. I bet my niece is coming home from school. So from there, I knew I still wanted to use the, the phrase cherish every moment. So I'm trying to find some kind of piece of paper that I want to use. And I'm flipping through a couple different things. I pull up my little box and pardon the dog. She gets the wind can blow and she, <laughs> she barks at it. So anyway, so I found a little piece of some kind of notebook paper. It's got lines on it and decided that's what I was going to use. And the width of it was just perfect when I turned it sideways like that. And I wrote, cherish every moment on there. And then I'm going to rip the, across the bottom. And normally I don't care for really blunt corners like that. But I kept it that way because in a second I am going to, oh, first I'm going to ink it up. I'm using Distress Oxide in Walnut Stain, which has lately been my favorite um, distress color from Tim Holtz and then I've got some fabric there so I'm just kind of sorting through it trying to find something to help embellish those words and I finally pull out this piece of I don't know I think maybe an old tablecloth or I don't know it's something I think I dyed or something so I'm going to I'm not sure what happens here somehow it's out of frame or I cut it and then I tried tearing it um, and I think I ended up not getting it quite how I wanted. So it, it wasn't tearing. So I went ahead and just cut it because it was, it was being kind of fiddly because it was so frayed and I wanted to keep that fraying there without pulling it to pieces. So I just cut it down. So, and here you can see I'm pulling out some of the, the, the fabric to fray it a bit more. Just like that. And I'm sure there's some kind of tool. Oh, you know what? There is a tool. It's some kind of Tim Holtz tool that I don't actually have that'll help fray edges a bit more. It's a scratch tool. I may have to uh, look around and see if I can find one of those. Anyway, I just used my fingers and it worked just fine. So you see, I've got those layered there and I was trying to decide if that would work. And I pulled out some heavy gel medium. I think that's the, the Prima stuff and I'm just going to use a paintbrush and go straight onto the back of the fabric and stick it into the journal and then I'll do on top of the fabric and stick my sentiment down my handwritten sentiment and and y'all you would think okay I'm sticking the sentiment down that's going to be enough I'm done but I still was processing these feelings processing what was going on felt like it needed it needs a little something else, so I'm going to keep playing with it. First, I'm going to stick some of those threads. I like the threads, and I want to make sure that they don't get pulled out, so I am going to go ahead and glue them down a little bit just to have that movement up above the, the sentiment, above the words, above that focal. I don't know why I'm still talking. Um... So from there, you see I'm kind of uh, pausing and trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So I take a, what is that? It is a, oh my gosh, I know exactly what it is and I can't think what it's called. Um, uh, a Neo Color 2, and it, which is a water-soluble crayon. So once I add a couple of little just up and down dashes, I'm going to go ahead and wet it. That always seems to make those colors pop just a little bit more, um, bring them to the surface when they get a little wet. So I, I did that, and with a little bit of dark that's on my brush, I just, I don't know, kind of got it off onto the page. And I was still trying to figure out what I needed on there, so I grabbed my hand-carved um, 
stamps, which are all made from erasers. Not all of them, but the majority of them are made from erasers. I do have a little bit of a tutorial on it that I might share up in that upper right corner if I remember. But I grabbed this one that's kind of a raindrop or teardrop shape and some of the, I think that's Wild Honey Distress Oxide. And I'm just going to add a couple of the um, stamps of those kind of along the right side of the of the page and I was kind of interpreting those a little bit as teardrops for my sadness but also um rain raindrops for the kind of rainbow of colors I've got going on in the background there so um and I think that maybe everything I do with this I'm taking another look at it and I'm going to cover up this um, left side so y'all can get a better look. But here are a few more pictures of this. And it really did help me kind of work through my feelings and get out some of that emotion. So I hope you take the time to work in your art journal and throw everything you've got at a page. It may not always be the most beautiful thing, but it is so healing for your heart. So, all right, guys, here's a few more pictures. Enjoy this, and thanks for watching. Bye.